the wall, CL20s knocking rates. IGI tripping, validated, shoot ready. Brown incarcerated, got my people living dead. Game wars back up back to the hole is where they sent me. Raising this life of crime down the slide. Pray for those better days, devil on my side. Gang life committed, but we dying over signs. Brown skin tatted up, but we wear that shit with pride. 25 to life, cell living up a row. Hit the yard level five. Hey, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling the blessing like I always say. It's one live, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. I made four songs. One of the songs I made with a subscriber, I will be dropping it soon so me and him can promote our YouTubes together. It was a good song, man. Appreciate the love. I appreciate the collaboration. I appreciate the support as well as your guys' support. All my songs will be dropping this week. Did a music video as well. So... A lot more to come, man. A lot more to come. I got more, more, more studio time to come. And I'm practicing and I'm making a lot more raps. So let's get into this next video. This next video is embarrassing. It's disgusting. I'm ashamed of myself. But I'm going to tell you guys anyways. Since you guys have been inquiring. So this is for the inquiring minds. To start it off, fun fact. Anybody that's charged with S crimes has to register under, under you know, M law. I find it funny that um, Boxer is a, what you would consider an S offender, but he's in the witness protection, protected by the U.S. Marshals, but his location can't be uh, located. But isn't that the law? Mind you, bear that in mind, just fool for thought, thought about it. So with that being said, hit that subscribe button, hit that like, always leave a comment, let me know what you guys think, and bring the jokes, because I know the jokes are coming. Let's have a fun laugh. There was this time in Arizona when I was out there. And he's on one of my YouTube nail, YouTube thumbnails in like my last two or three videos. There's four of us on the page. He's one of them. He's the shortest one, skinny one with a little mustache right here. He's from uh, San Jose. And um, one day he comes up to us. We're like in the, we're in the room. We're playing a UFC fight club when Kimbo Slice came out in it, that edition. And we're gambling. We're making money off, you know, the fights and... He's like, hey, man, I'm going to bust a spread. Man, you guys want some? He was a very uh, unfortunate inmate, should I say. He didn't have a lot of money coming. And um, this was his first package he ever received from his family. Most of it was like 70, 80 soups, some bags of chips, a couple of meat logs, a couple of bags of beans. We were all balling out of control out there. I mean, I mean balling. We were buying because the canteens list was four pages long, front and back. So we were getting microwavable dinners, like chicken, pot pies. We were eating good. So a regular spread like that didn't mean nothing to us. But we all knew that, you know, he was he was broke and he, you know, he didn't have money. His first package, he wanted to bust a unity spread. That's what a lot of northerners do. We bust a lot of unity spreads to show carnalismo. That's a form of unity right there. So we gave it to him. We already had just ate a Frito boat. We made like a bunch of Frito boats and... We were full, but he wanted. He was like real adamant about making everybody a spread. So we're like, yeah, for sure, man. Go ahead. Um, we got you. We'll eat it. You know, we all wanted to show the love back. He goes in the cell for about 30, 45 minutes. And we're like, damn, man, how long does it take to make some soups and some beans? This shit just took like five or ten minutes, but he's gone. Well, I guess when he went to go to, the, the, to his room to, to make the spread, he decided to use the restroom. Pull out his uh, his uh, his banger, rewrap it, put it back up. No gloves on his hands, so he got all kinds of that the poop underneath his nails, and then wash his hands. Good enough, cause he made the spread, and when he made the spread, somehow some way it got into the spread, which I don't see how that's even possible, and then he fed us. I, don't, I mean, if he mixed it with his hands, bro, that's crazy. And it shouldn't have been touched. It should, my food should not have been tampered with. They got FDA laws against that kind of stuff, and he still did that. So it made me mad. It really made me real mad. But we didn't know about it until later on when this happened, when this happened. So we all eat it. About three days later, we're all sick. I mean, all of us, there was like 27 of us sick. With E. coli. Doctors, the, the, the doctors at the at the facility, the staff were like, how the hell do you guys get E. coli? They were thinking it's the, their food. Since it's a new facility, they might have got some food unprocessed or somewhere from some state or some bunker and fed it to us. But we're all sick. I mean, we're all 
dying. We're all turning pale. We're sweating in our sleeves. We're, you know, releasing everything from our bodies uncontrollably, throwing up everywhere. So they quarantined us, put us all in our cells, couldn't come out. We had to come out only for showers one at a time. Messed up our program for a while. Well, we're all sick. We all find out what it is. He's sick. He's sicker than a dog. But we all get transferred to Oklahoma. So we're all on the bus. Sick. Barely recovering. It didn't hit me that bad. But it hit me well enough. But I was starting to recover. The dude I was chained up to next to me had it bad. He was from Salinas. It was an older homie. So we get on the bus. We're, we're, it's a 16-hour drive. And they're telling us, hey, man, uh, we're going to make a few stops. The first place they stopped at was like Burger King or something. And I hadn't ate real food since I had been locked up. This was like 2008, 2009. It's been four years. My body's not used to real food. I'm used to prison food, nasty food, which my body shouldn't have been able to tell a difference, but it did. So they gave me, a, everybody got a, a burger, fries, and a soda. The dude next to me goes, hey, but look, I'll give you all my food. I'm not hungry. I don't want to have an accident. Just let me get your water bottle. So I get my water bottle. So now I'm eating two burgers, two fries, two sodas. Take it down. Smacked it. Nothing. Mind you, I got on that bus with two bangers, two six-inch bangers. So that's 12 inches already up in me. Plus my education bundle. Plus my CLC bundle. Plus another sack of recreational substances. We'll call it that. So I'm stuffed like a Thanksgiving turkey, bro, to the neck with it to the neck stomach's deep my stomach was like literally tight from everything that was in there so i'm on the bus i smack his uh, his breakfast lunch comes around same thing it was arby's we get burgers some other stuff and a drink he doesn't want it he wants my water bottle i smack all that food too i'm thinking man this is a once in a lifetime opportunity i'm gonna eat some real food i'm gonna enjoy this bad idea dinner time same thing I smack his food, give him his water bottle. So now I'm nodding off, man. I'm tired. I'm sitting there, there. And I remember just a bump in the road made me fart. So I looked at it, but I looked at him and he seen that I farted, but I woke up. So I made it seem like he farted. So I scoot over away from him. Like, bro, you, you know what I mean? You over here pooting on yourself. <laughs> Knowing damn well I did it. But then I was like, man, bro, something don't feel right, man. My butt feels hot. Hot. Like steaming, boiling hot. And I'm like, no, no way, no way. Then my stomach started going. And I was like, oh, God, I got to go to the bathroom. God had to go to the bathroom, bro, real bad. But I can't go to the bathroom on the bus because I'm waist, I'm shackled up in waist chains, so my hands in the front, so there ain't no wiping. And they told us that. That's why it's common practice when you know you're going to get on the Greyhound bus, wake up in the morning, Take a, you know what I mean? Just get it all out your system. And don't don't eat nothing on the bus until you at least get to the facility you're going. I wasn't thinking like that. I wasn't thinking that I had a 16-hour drive that I should have kept my stomach empty. So now my stomach's like I'm pregnant with an alien. And um, I got to go. And I still got maybe like seven, six hours left on this bus ride. So I'm, I'm panicking. So now I'm just rocking back and forth, just trying to make my stomach... Stop it from being uh, upset. And then next thing you know, and I'm like, Ugh! now my dude's the dude next to me chained up. He understands where I'm coming from, but it's, the bus is starting to smell. And I'm low key, like, without anybody noticing, I'm looking back to see if anybody's smelling it, but everybody's asleep. So I'm like, man, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm good. About maybe two hours away from the trip. I just feel the water and the juice just come down my leg. I was like, oh, God, not again. We got, we finally get there, and, I, and now, now I smell like doo-doo. The dude next to me, he can't stand the smell of doo-doo. So he just, the whole time driving, he's just like with his face, with his hands in his face. I'm like, wow, this is embarrassing. So we get off the bus. They put us in a little tank. Oh, man, just my luck. I, well, at first I went to the little, it was like a little stall in the bathroom, and I told the homies to give me some postes, and I told my celly, I was like, hey, bro, I kind of pooped my pants. So he's laughing, right? And I got some toilet paper, and I'm just wiping my butt, but it's it's sticky. It's sticking on my left butt cheek. It's sticking on 
the back of my leg hairs. So I really can't clean myself, but I can just wipe whatever was left that I can wipe off, but it's still dry in the crack. I'm like, oh man, guess what they tell us to do? Strip down butt naked so we can squat and cough. I'm like, oh my God, I forgot about this too, bro. I got a squat and cough with doo-doo smeared all over my butt cheeks like somebody just wiped their hand on a wet window, a brown wet window. And, and it's all in my, dude, My I can feel my leg hairs twisted and tangled up from the juice and the dryness. I'm like, oh, this sucks, bro. So I, they call me next to the cop and I tell the cop, I'm like, look, bro, um, I had an accident on the bus, bro. I didn't make it in time to the bathroom. He's like, I still need you to strip out. I'm like, ah, oh, damn. So I pull my boxers down. Bro, you can see the whole back of just light brown dye. I was like, so I had it to him and he sees it. And he's like, just squat and cough. I was like, bro, I haven't even got the chance to wipe yet. He goes, oh my God, you got to kidding me, right? I was like, yeah, bro, I didn't make it to the bathroom. It's all over me, bro. He goes, just go stand over there and get dressed. I was like, I need some new boxers. He's all, get you some new boxers. So now I'm standing over there with both my hands cuffed in my, my, my front area and everybody's fully dressed and I'm just standing there, bucket naked. <laughs> Homies are like, what happened? I was like, I need new boxers. I had no choice but to announce it in front of a bus of 20 some people that I needed some new boxers. They bring me some new boxers. Cops just looking at me with like disgust. As if I ain't even looking at myself as in disgust already. So he gives me the boxers. I change. I can't wait to go to the cell. Can't wait. But the whole time that I'm walking toward, man, they got me going to a far building, pushing a cart, and I'm bent over at the waist because it's coming out. All the, 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 the two pieces are moving together. They're like in the second pocket, not the first pocket. The first pocket's in your intestines. Second pocket's just right there by the, by the you know what I mean? By the... By the balloon knot. So I'm like, oh, and I'm crying. And then, then, I, then they put me on the top tier, on the top stairs. And I'm like, oh, wow, bro, I got to climb the stairs. So now I'm just like hunched back, like Herbert the pervert, just trying to walk. Like telling myself, hey, just push the car to the door. When I get in there, I'm going to drop it in the toilet, bro. I can't, I can't go anymore. By the time I made it in there, what happens? <laughs> It's like my butt knew there was a toilet there and it was ready to come out, but it didn't allow me to sit on the toilet in time. That was the only pair of boxers I had. So they go, and I'm like, oh, and I pull my boxers down and it all hits the toilet. And it sounds like, like, like nukes and bombs just hitting water in the ocean. I'm like, whoo. But then everything else comes out. I'm talking about imagine your stomach that hasn't ate this kind of food in years what it did to my stomach. So now I got the toilet full of cream. Uh, it, it, honestly, it looked like it looked like if you were sticky, like if you took the first layer off a of pot pie that you warm up in the oven, it was just all in the water like that, just brown. I'm like, ah. So I started digging my hands into it, grabbing everything, cleaning. Whole room, though. I'm pretty sure the whole tears smelled like ba doo, doo And I'm like, ah, man, that's crazy, bro. So now I got messed up boxers again. I wash them in the, in the sink. And now I'm just freeballing it all day and asking for a pair of boxers. So, yeah, that's what happened. And that's what happens when you put too much stuff where it don't belong. Thinking that you, you're capable. Because I felt like I was capable of it. And I was pretty much capable of it because everything went up there fine. It just came out wrong. And it pushed a lot of stuff that shouldn't have came out. That should have been came out on another time. And it embarrassed me in front of all my homies. So I was, I was known as Shitty Boo Boo for a long time. And that's a name that I hate to I hate to admit. It's an embarrassing moment that I wish that I could never admit, that I wish I never had, but it happened. And like I said, it was, this wasn't my first time. Sometimes, you know, when you when you when you play with that area, you, you loosen it up. Sometimes you lose control of the of the axis of the certain things coming out. And that's what happens when I put my pants. So I hope you guys get a good laugh at it. It was a crazy prison experience. Don't ever want to live through that again. That's why I have since then. I haven't stuck nothing up there. Nothing. She hasn't either. So with that being said, man, I hope it give you guys a funny laugh, man. Kids, don't go to jail, man, because sometimes you're going to have to utilize your gangster pocket, your man purse to hide stuff. And it has irreparable damage in the long run. You know, you're, you're, it's never the same. Sometimes 
farts come out. I didn't even, I didn't even feel when they, when they came out. Sometimes when I go to the bathroom, it just shoots out. It doesn't, it doesn't allow me the controllable sense to say, you know what, I'm going to drop this proportion out or I'm going to make sure it's not big. It just goes. Phew. Sometimes you can't control it, man. I got busted spokes. So with that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. You only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. Peace.